The Alaska Range is so immense and so remote that there's no opportunities for us to resupply along the route. There's no corner store. There's no market. There's no apple trees. There is nothing out here, just wildness. We've been talking about how we're going to make these caches for actually for over a year. Because the Alaska Range has nothing, there's not a single village on this entire route, um, we're going to put these food caches in in advance. In my experience with just space and weight, you can carry about five days of food on your back. So we've got five food caches, and they're spread out about 120 to 150K apart. That's the distance we think we can make on the ground if we can't fly in five days. In five days on foot, that's just a total guess. We're just hucking stones at a wall. We have no idea. What we decided to do is just build these really simple wood boxes. A grizzly bear who's hungry, he's going to crack that right open. We would prefer to have plastic food canisters, but we're not willing to even risk not being able to dispose of them properly. After we collect each food cache, we'll burn them in our nightly campfires. If you imagine you're extremely hungry after six or seven days of hiking on light rations, and all you want to do is go to an all-you-can-eat restaurant, you know, or pizzeria, and then, and then you, get to, you get to this. And this is all you got for the next week. You're not going to be that psyched. You're going to be, you're going to be OK with it, but uh, there's no pizza in here. Yeah, it's getting real now. You know, we're going in first time, put the food caches in today. So it's a pretty exciting day, but hopefully we'll come back successful and we can get this thing going. The problem is, is they're pretty critical. They're going to be like 100, 120K apart. And if we're not flying, that's quite a bit of ground to cover in five days. It doesn't seem like much, but in this kind of terrain, you're going pretty slow. We went and did this scout yesterday, and we think that's going to work, because all the alpine's still totally in snow, so we can just dig them in and forget about them until we get there. It's going to work well for a cache, though, huh? There's a lot of launch possibilities up there. Yeah, I kind of like it. Pace is all, all different ways, except for due north, and even that, you can cheat out. Yep. That's the theory, but we got to get to these caches. If we can't make it to our next food cache, it's a no-brainer. We run out of food. We can get ground squirrels. We, there's stuff out there we can certainly get. But uh, yeah, we're going to be hungry. Dave and I had another big day on the ground. Really discouraging after waiting a week. I guess today was the first day it came to my mind that this just isn't going to work. To get to this cache, which we desperately need because we're starving, uh, still about another 25 miles, so that's easy two days on the ground. Um, and then a whole bunch of bad weather, so. Yeah. just went for it. And we didn't take any time, didn't rest, and caught the smallest little thermal and just soared it up, soared it up, and uh, just nailed it. Yes! Yes! We made it, man. We made it. We made it. Ah! I can see. I saw it right when I was coming in. We've got our Leatherman to unscrew the food cache. Uh, I will knife it. I will get into it however I have to. So. It's time to go get the food. <laughs> oh, let's take Got this it? to our gliders. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my god, jerky. It was on, and it was beautiful, and Foraker and Denali were in the background. It was just the most magnificent flight I think I've ever had. 
yeah, I'm on top of the moon now to get here and have some food.